I am Phil Ashey from the American Anglican Council, and we are continuing our orientation, our introduction to the new 2019 Book of Common Prayer with baptism and confirmation beginning on page 159. Uh, I love what it says at the top of page 160. In holy baptism, the outward and visible sign is water, uh, and the inward and spiritual grace is the presence of Christ coming in to incorporate us into the body of Christ. You're going to hear uh, in great detail from our scholars in just a minute what baptism means. Confirmation, uh, we all ought to think of this as, uh, uh, as ordination to ministry, really, uh, for all of us, uh, well before we become priests or deacons for everybody. And it's uh, the outward and visible sign is the laying on of hands by the bishop and the inward and spiritual grace is the ninefold gifts of the Holy Spirit given to each of us at an adult confession of faith so that we can go and be the ministers of Christ that we're called to be. So let's listen in on what our scholars have to say about baptism and confirmation. The most I have ever confirmed at one time in the U.S. is 106 at a single confirmation. Um, uh, I, of course, in Africa, I've confirmed 300 at a time. Baptism itself is is complete initiation into the church, and so it's it's done. Once you're baptized, you're you're a member of Christ's body and um, a full full member of the community. And then later, your godparents um, would fulfill their promises and present you for confirmation, and you'd be um, you'd have the bishop lay his hands on you and receive prayer for the Holy Spirit to to kind of continue to bless you in a special way, and you'd go and do your, your ministry in the church. They're middle-ish in this prayer book, which is the historic placement for them. Um, there, there was a recent prayer book that we're all very familiar with that sort of oddly stuck baptism up front and then stuck confirmation way back in the back. They're together um, and they're uh, sort of where they need to be in terms of usability and frequency. Um, so, so baptism is maybe um, the third most common liturgy for most people. You know, they're familiar with the Holy Eucharist, they're um, maybe familiar with the, with the daily offices, but um, baptism is, is the thing that brings a lot of people to our churches. Um, the beauty of baptism as um, this liturgy is constructed in this prayer book is that it is um, undeniably rooted in the Anglican tradition. It's undeniably rooted in scripture. One of the questions we often get is, well, in our tradition we baptize, but some other traditions you know, do uh, uh, um, dedications, and, um, and, then, and then later on we confirm, and other traditions do baptism at that point. But it's, it's actually a different understanding. What I tell every family who comes to me with an infant particularly, um, and, and this is sort of normative, obviously I've baptized adults and teenagers, but a family comes to me with an infant and says, um, you know, why do we baptize an infant? And the short elevator speech answer is because this is something God's doing, not, not something we're doing. And this is us, um, the church, the family, the godparents, the aunts, the uncles, um, the others in the congregation laying hold to God's claim um, that I will adopt you as a son and daughter. I will make you new. I will free you from the bondage of sin. It's a promise of God. It's a covenant. Um, and like every covenant between God and man, He starts it and we respond. It's not a question of us starting it and forcing God to do something. God offers us a gift and says, I want to bring you into my family. And so this is us laying hold of that promise for this child. Yeah, there's probably nothing unique, but the way that Anglicans have done baptism historically and certainly the way that this prayer book does it is you're, you'd have godparents or sponsors and, and God willing your own parents would present you to the church uh, and you, uh, uh, unless you can present yourself, unless you're of age, but it's often infants, um, you're presented to the church uh, and then you're, you're asked questions uh, about will you renounce these certain things and take on these other certain things, so do you renounce the devil um, and the influences of the world that would pull you away from God and, and your own your own flesh, your own desires that would pull you away from God, and do you do you take on these things? Do you take on the lordship of Jesus and His command, um, and your your participation in the church? Um, and then you'd say the creed. You get the chance to confess your faith publicly. Um, if you're an adult, if not, then you know your sponsors or your godparents would say so on your behalf until you can 
you can present yourself in that way. But that's, uh, you go from there and you're, uh, you're a full member of the church and you could receive communion and, and be counted as a member of Christ's body. It's a, one of the stranger liturgies um, in that baptism, unlike communion, you, you never repeat. So you're baptized once and that's it. You're, you're a baptized Christian. And so it can be a, an interesting question to say, what, how will baptism ever be useful for a lay person to have in their hands in the prayer book if this is done once and most of us don't remember it? It's been a helpful devotional act to go back and read the baptism service, even though I'm not being rebaptized and even though it's privately. Um, it's this chance to go back and see what was promised in your name, what you yourself took on when you came for confirmation. Um, it's, yeah, it, it, it's a really a beautiful service. The whole point of it is our union with Christ. So as we're baptized into Christ, um, we take on everything that's his, and he takes on everything that's ours. And for me to read back through that and be reminded of my identity is a pretty, pretty helpful thing. Uh, confirmation um, is, in many of the Christian traditions, it is um, peculiar or uh, more emphasized among Anglicans than, than really any other tradition. Um, Anglicans have always had um, uh, wanted to be related to their bishops and um, really from before the, the English Reformation um, it was the practice of bishops to visit every congregation um, and to hear the vows of those who'd been raised in the faith um, to make their affirmation uh, uh, of the Christian faith to claim it for their own to lay hands on so an, a, a, an amazing part of of our tradition, one of the things that the 2019 prayer book uh, reasserts is the, the centrality of confirmation uh, of an adult claiming of the faith, an adult profession of the faith, and of the bishop laying hands on um, to stir up the Holy Spirit uh, so that those who claim this faith uh, can be sent into the world um, uh, to, to proclaim the faith. Confirmation um, is, I call confirmation, it's, it's Pentecost for the believer. Um, confirmation is an explicit um, claim of the Pentecost promise um, to the believer. The Holy Spirit, um, the bishop lays his hands on a confirmand and prays that the Holy Spirit would come upon them and empower them with the fruit of the Spirit, with every good gift. God has um, called each person into ministry. Each person has a unique and important place in his church. And so here's the bishop acting on um, the line of bishops who have their hands on his, his back behind him, um, claiming that gift of the Holy Spirit in this believer's life. Um, so it's not, it's not quite the same as baptism. Obviously, they're, they're, the two are linked um, in the, the usually teenager, sometimes adult, um, does claim that faith. And so there's that aspect of it too. But this is not Christian bar mitzvah. This is, um, this is the promise of the Holy Spirit coming upon that person to equip them with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Well, one of the things that um, is important for any church to call itself a cohesive thing is to have a standard. Uh, um, orthopraxy is a fancy theology word we throw around, but it means right practice. And so um, we as ministers are always under the danger of our opinions, our thoughts, our flaws entering into the practice of the church, entering into the teaching of the church. So to have this written down, to have this, um, this confirmation service given to the bishops, look, our bishops are great, every single one of them, I'm sure but maybe they make a mistake here and there. They can't make a mistake in terms of, of theology, um, in terms of practice, um, so long as they do what they've all agreed on doing. Um, and so the church has said, here's how we do this, not here's how this bishop does this, or this priest does this, or this minister does this. This is how the church does this.